All right. So basically, when you get into a game with Setsuko, right? And you both start playing a reroll comp. You know who pivots? It's always Setsuko. Because you know who has more to lose? Setsuko. But in this situation, I am the Setsuko. Veni Sour is the me. So I have to pivot because, you know, if we hold hands 7 8, he loses 30, I lose 100. Welcome back to another Alvado video. Now, in today's video, we're going to be watching a game played by Emily Wang. She's been to Challenger before. She basically hits Challenger every set. She's a veteran in the scene. She's played a lot of games this set, so she definitely knows what's up. She knows what she's doing. Now, before we get into this game, there's a few things that I need to tell you. One, uh, I'm going to be announcing something at 1,000 subscribers, so help me get there. And two, there's a good chance that I'm going to be live right now. Why is that? Because before I upload this video, I'm going live and I'm not ending stream until I hit a three star of every single five cost. So yeah, go check out my Twitch. There's a good chance I'll be live. And yeah, let's get into this game. So she started tier. Uh, if you look at the top left corner of the screen, you can see that she recently has been on a bit of a losing streak. And um, she wanted to just hard force Yumi this game because she thinks that the comp is like a really strong comp. She wouldn't be, she wouldn't be incorrect. Yumi is pretty good right now, especially since that you can uh, basically guarantee any of the strong hero augments in the comp that you want. It's really hard to miss. But she's not playing Yumi this game. She, uh, she chose to slam Shiv. You don't want to slam Shiv in the Yumi comp because you really need the tier for redemption and for blue buff or for like a mana item on, on Yumi. So what she's doing now is she is going to either be playing Kaisa or Laser Core. She has uh, a couple Laser Core units and she has a Kaisa. So she's thinking, you know, I already have a Kaisa 1. I have Phony Frontline. Phony Frontline is not only one of the strongest uh, augments you can get on 2-1, but it is also very strong in the Kaisa comp, so that, um, you know, you have some extra frontline for the, uh, for the mid game mainly, because you really start only getting a really strong frontline when you hit Cho'Gath 3 and Rammus 3, or at least one of them 3-starred. So getting the phony frontline in the mid game allows you to not have to uh, utilize more unit slots for frontline so that you can guarantee fit in for recon. So she has a laser core in. She, she has like a lot of upgrades. She has a really strong frontline. She has a really strong back line. She's going to be pushing for a five street. And I'll tell you right now, she actually does get the five streak. And I want to get to the later parts in this video, so I'm going to head and skip to Krugs. Okay, here we are at Krugs. She just finished getting her 5 streak. Now, the whole point of this video is that she does a fantastic job transitioning from comp to comp, and she understands very well how to play around a high roll spot. When I record these videos, I do like making sure that, you know, spots aren't too high roll so that we have something to learn. But I do think that a lot of, you know, old plat, even master players have a troubled time, has a, have a difficult time understanding when and like what decisions to be making when they have a high roll spot. Because oftentimes the reason why they have a high roll spot is because you're slamming like items for tempo. And then when your items don't turn out so well, you have an issue trying to, uh, like play a capped board and then other people figure out how to have a capped board and then uh you know you just kind of slowly bleed out over time so she wants to play kaisa she's scouting this other guy he's playing kaisa a common theme a theme in this game uh there's a guy called veni sour uh we'll we'll see him a bit later on in the game but Considering he's playing Kaisa, she does not want to contest him. So what she's going to do is she's going to pivot off. Now she has the ability to do that because of because she is very healthy. If you're at a spot where you know instead of being 100 HP on 3-1, you're like 60 HP on 3-1, you're going to have a lot more difficult of a time pivoting. 
because you don't really have that like much leeway but since she is at 100 hp and she has like a very strong board she can very easily pivot this comp now i want to talk about the hero augment that she selected so she has laser core in right now and she's aiming to try and get five laser core uh, laser core got changed from a 369 trait to a 3579 trait and so she saw this line where instead of uh, using her four rerolls, she thinks Senna is the perfect unit that she can use to transition the gap from in, from playing Kaisa into a late game board. She chose Kaisa because, I mean, she chose Senna. Senna is the hero augment that every unit adjacent to Senna gets 20 AD. So you, you might be thinking, okay, well, right now, it's, it's really not that good. It's not very useful. Most of her damage is AP or like laser core damage. So she's not really getting much benefit from this Senna comp. But the thing is, is that she is changing her game plan and she's trying to figure out how she can pivot her board uh, or prepare her board for a late game pivot. Laser core is one of those comps where it's very strong as like a tempo comp. But it's really hard to actually win games with laser core and since she's so healthy and because of how healthy she is she is uh also rich simultaneously because uh you know she was able to get all the street gold and now she's kind of sacking her board because she can afford to lose some hp so she's six streaked into four streaked she has a uh, yeah i mean she's 50 gold right now She's in a really good spot to uh, be able to, you know, reach level 8 and then figure out her game plan from then. You can see that she's utilizing the double Senna strat where if you put Senna's next to each other, then they both get the AD. And then units that are next to both Senna's get two times the amount of AD. So, like, this Ash and this Vein are going to be getting... 40 AD instead of just 20, or actually I think it's 30. I think it's adjacent units get 30 AD. So they're getting uh, 60 AD, not, not 30. A lot of things are about to happen all at once pretty soon. So some things that I want you to keep track of is keep in mind her traits, and then also keep in mind uh, the items she has and when she chooses to go for her, her, her item selection for the rest of the game we can see the final hero augment here and she's able to get high-end shopping she doesn't want a golden egg and she doesn't want windfall like i said she already has a lot of money she's basically in the perfect spot to take high-end shopping now, i know you might be sitting there and, and you might be thinking okay well she's in a game where she has enough hp and she has enough money where it's correct to go for high-end shopping and you think that there's like something to learn from this well the thing is is that i can promise you that if you understand that high-end shopping is already broken there's probably someone out there that doesn't realize that high-end shopping is broken especially from a spot like this so i'm going to like go ahead and talk about how why this is like the perfect spot to take high-end shopping and what about it makes it so strong so that you know those who may not understand why high-end shopping is like broken in this spot will now be more uh or will now like understand why it's like basically an auto take and then you know maybe they didn't consider taking it in their games but they will understand why it's so good now so first of all this meta is like five costs are very strong right now um, if you can get, you know, Urgot, Fiddlesticks, in this game it's Windy Janna. Windy Janna is insane. Aphelios is really broken. Or like, Aphelios is the reason why uh, five costs have been enabled. Because five costs have always been pretty powerful. But you don't get uh, that like one uh, carry unit that you can depend on. But now that Aphelios is really strong, you can always look to carry Aphelios. And... Now that she knows that she's playing around five costs, instead of staying in this like laser core track, you can see, I mean, she has five laser core and she's going to play this for stage four. But of course, 
he knows that she's going to be playing around 5 cost cap. So she wants to be building items that Aphelios would utilize better, not Zed, because she knows that she's going to eventually be playing around Aphelios. And so yeah, so since the very beginning of the game, he was considering playing Tysa, pivoted into Laser Core, and we can see that she still has the Laser Core build on, and you know, she's going to be utilizing that in the early game, but because of high-end shopping, she's able to, uh, she's going to be able to convert this like laser core mid game into a, into like a Jeff Bezos capped legendary board into the late game. She's playing two Janas in this spot because she sold the units that she doesn't need. She's going to be doing another roll down here because you know, it's very valuable to roll. 40 gold on level 8 is 40 gold on level 9 with high-end shopping. You can see she's hitting a lot of very powerful units. She hit Urgot, she's hitting this Fiddlesticks too. And you can now see that she finally found this Aphelios. She went for a Giant Slayer there, which, I mean, would have been good on Zed regardless. But, you know, it's really good in this spot as well. USS is also another one of these items that's really good on Zed because he's like a, a uh, he's like an assassin type unit that really benefits off of not getting disrupted because he's also a melee carry. But in this spot, USS Aphelios is actually really powerful because since he has a Janna 2 and this Senna augment, it's almost always uh, more beneficial to clump your units up because you want to actually utilize the Windy Janna and the uh, the Senna like AD gain. So normally it's like very risky to have this many units on your board clumped up. But now that he uh, now that she has like QSS, she doesn't need to worry about getting um, like screwed by like very powerful board. DCs like um, like Urgot. Like imagine there's like an Urgot or a Fiddlesticks that she's facing up against. You know, even though that 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 cast of, of either of those units are going to be very uh, powerful, they're at least not going to be CCing the Aphelios, and she can guarantee that. And you'll see later on, she actually uh, there's someone with like. Raider spoils, and then she there's a chance that she could have gotten her Aphelios Blitz grabbed. I think it's this next fight actually. So she has a two star Fiddlesticks. She's going for Fiddlesticks items, and again she's doing this default positioning where she wants to greed both the Windy Janna and the Senna support. Yeah, this was the fight. So this also was Venny Sour. Or Venusaur, I don't know how to say his name, but this was the person that was contesting her, and you can see that she he did contest and did hit for the most part, but she ended up beating him, and she's on her way to hit going top four, and he's and they're on their way to you know going pop four. And so even though you know you're looking at this board, and a lot of the times if you have you know these types of units, you would probably be level nine because it's basically impossible to hit 2-star Leona, 2-star Aphelios, 2-star Fiddlesticks on level 8, 2-star Janna. So with this board, you are playing like kind of down a fawn. But of course, you know, these units are so powerful and she essentially doesn't really need anything else. She made some decisions early, some decisions earlier on... Uh, her front line and she, she just prioritized three Aegis. I think she dropped like a Sejuani too, or like she had the potential to have Sejuani, but she ended up just dropping it for this Echo 1 because she valued the Aegis. She probably scouted the lobby and there's a lot of like magic damage dealers. Aegis in the late game is also just really powerful because um, realistically, if you think of every single five cost in the game, a lot of them do... Uh, magic damage and i know you can't really tell from these fights but um Aphelios with this windy janna with sure shot with the the ad bonus from senna 
Even without like a triple damage item, Giant Slayer is obviously multiplying his damage and Runeads gives you some amount of AD. To assess is basically just attack speed and uh, you know the CC prevention. But this Aphelios, because of Windy Janna and all those other stuff that I just said, is like you get into the late game, like look at this, like this Aphelios just like one taps things. Okay, she's now in a, you know, 1v1 situation here. And this person has two Zephyrs. She dodged the Zephyrs last fight, and she's going to expertly maneuver her board around so that she can dodge the Zephyrs again this fight. Looks like he's just putting the Zephyrs in the front line because he doesn't, he knows that she's probably going to swap up her positioning in the back line. So he's just not going to mess around with trying to guess where she's going to place his Aphelios and, she, and they're just going to Zephyr the front line. But then they realize how uh, how valuable it is to Zephyr the back line, so they're going to try and Zephyr the Aphelios. She's rolling all of her gold here because she knows it's the very last fight of the game. She has the potential to hit Urgot 2 there. She misses, but it doesn't matter. She still has enough time to scout. And you can see that she expertly dodges the Zephyr yet again. And, you know, his team is just not even close to strong enough to be able, being able to beat her board. And she takes the W. So she went from Kaisa to Laser Core to Cap to Felios. Now, you might seem, it might seem like it was like really easy to play that line. But at the end of the day, there's still a lot of decisions that have to be made there. And I think, you know, the, her items is definitely what was the impressive part about this game. She had nothing but AP items. She had Sunfire Shiv and like two rods. And then she somehow was able to utilize all her items and pivot into a capped Aphelios board. Also goes to show exactly how strong high-end shopping is. If you even just compare it to Windfall in that spot, which she was also offered, high-end shopping already gives you 10 gold. So there's only a 35 gold difference between that and Windfall in the first place. And if you really think about the difficulty of capping your board out around level 9 is that you actually have to hit level 9 in the first place and that requires you know upwards of 60 70 gold so high end shopping essentially is you know you get 10 gold but then you also get like 70 gold on top of that because you don't need to hit level 9 you can legitimately spend the rest of your game uh, on level 8 because of how strong these 5 plus legendaries are Hopefully you learned something in this video, like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.